Hey everyone, it's Jim and Charles from Melatone Amps. And in this final episode of the build series of the Rocket, we're going to show you how we bring uh, new equipment that's passed its bench test, um, and how we bring it into a system and how we safely start it up. So why don't we just, um, why don't we turn it on? Now I've got the volume set to minimum and everything is wired up the way it's supposed to be and I think I'll, I've got the input indicator on the, the forward pair of our CA jacks. So that's coming off of our, this is actually our, our new uh, modern line universal phono preamp. This is um, the first production prototype. Yeah. Um, and it's, it's going to be coming out as soon as we can get this out to customers who've been patiently waiting. This will, we'll start getting this out the door. So, um, so our IEC is plugged in and we don't have a signal coming in right now. The phono is currently off because the first thing you want to do is check for noise. Yeah. So now the mo we've got the right hand mono block our Yuri is on the floor. You'll see that maybe in a minute when we go over to the speaker. Uh, it's on and it's warmed up. And the first thing we want to do is hear if we have any catastrophic noise. Now, if you've uh, bench tested um, your preamp and the voltages are all good and you've got a set of tested tubes, we should be good. But we're going to, we start cautiously and then we, we warm up. So, and of course, when you're checking for noise, you want to check for it on both channels, but we're just doing it on one here for, as an example. Yeah. Yeah. So let's, let's bring the volume up to a quarter and I don't hear anything at all. Let's bring it up to a half. I can hear a little tiny bit of the noise floor. Let's bring it up to three quarters. Now, when you're bringing volume up this loud, you have to make sure that you've got complete control of everything, that you're wide awake, that you're paying attention. Um, you know, if you're using your phone as a source for it or something like that, make sure it can't receive a notification and deafen you. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, well, let's go maximum volume. And it's, wow, it is quiet. Well, we all... I can actually can't hear the noise floor. And I, I'm about a foot and a half away from the speaker here. Now, here's something. Here's a pro tip. Never, ever, it doesn't matter what you're testing, whether you're testing a headphone amp or you've got a little digital music player hooked up to something and for a, a, a noise floor test, you brought the volume up to max. Never, ever, ever do anything else until you get the volume back down. Yeah. Because you can, you can get really badly hurt. You're, you can lose a lot of hearing really fast. Um, so I've got the volume down to minimum. I'm going to actually turn on the, uh, the phono preamp and it's got an independent, uh, DC filament supply for the gain tubes. Uh, that was that second switch you heard me turning on. And and actually, I've already got queued up. I think I changed my mind as to what the first track's going to be. And I've already got queued up Miles Davis's stunning um, album, Kind of Blue. And this is actually the Analog uh, Productions 45 RPM version of it, uh, which is, they did an amazing job. I mean, given the condition of the master tapes, this, this is amazing. We actually have a US first. Um, of kind of blue. It's a little scratchy and the tonality of it sounds a bit better than the 45 RPM, but you got to remember the 45 RPM was done off some very old master six, 60 years after. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, all right. So it looks like the phono is warmed up there. Okay. So let's go back. Now we've got an input. Yeah. So now we're going to hear the noise floor of the whole system from the cartridge all the way through the cables, all the way through two high gain stages in the phono preamp through the EQ, out the cathode follower, and then some more uh, RCA patch cords. So 
your noise floor is going to go up, of course, because we're amplifying everything in the signal chain. Uh, everything is noise floor from before it is now getting amplified. So I'm at half volume. Now this is a very high gain preamp. Um, and you almost never are going to have it half volume unless you're doing, you know, a pool party with, with uh, uh, 100 watt uh, tube amps. That, or you're driving a power amp that is extremely difficult to drive with it. Yeah, and at that point, still your volume is going to be so high that you're going to, you would never want to be this close to your speakers. I'm within three or four feet of the speakers, three feet probably, which is a, just under a meter. So I can just hear the noise floor now at that volume level where I'm standing. And it's well above the normal listening volume. Now, okay, so that's all excellent. Now, what about the, um, the bypass switch? Well, right now I got it in on, so we have it in high gain. Uh, what if we click it off? Let's see if there's any noise. Nothing. And there shouldn't be. What about the, um, the input switch? So let's go to detente. That's the middle position. I'm going to bring it up to half volume so you can hear if there's a noise. Nothing. Now there's no input at all. In fact, the noise floor went down, of course, because they're in the detente position. That's in the center position of the selector switch. There is no signal coming in. It's basically nada. So let's go to the open pair of RCAs and now we don't hear anything. So you shouldn't hear anything when you're actuating the switch. We're just, we're just having a bit of fun. Um, now, why don't we get this spun up? And let's turn our volume down a little bit more here. So I just barely have the volume on. Now you can hear the noise floor of the record, right? The stylus moving through the vinyl surface. And it's a very quiet opening. I can hear everybody saying, Jim, shut up. We want to listen to this. such a simple recording and it just it just brings me back to the first time I ever heard the record every time okay so we're going to do um, I think one last test we're going to park the the you can't see it I don't think but I've got the I've got the tone arm parked if you have a digital music player get it into pause so that it can't possibly make any sound and I'm going to show you how we actually listen for really low, low noise floor. Now you, we can measure this on our bench, we have um, you know com uh, computerized um, sweeping equipment, we can mm -hmm. look at the noise floor across the frequency band and that's useful and um, but most people don't have that kind of equipment um, at home. They do have a pair of ears though. You have ears and the rule when it comes to um, to analyzing sound is it's, it's good and useful to have the specifications, to have the bench testing numbers, to know even how to read those numbers and understand what they actually mean. But your ears at the end of the day they are the final arbiter of the sound quality. So let's just we're going to swing the camera around and I'll sh just show you how we listen for the noise floor. Okay, so we've got um, 
our high efficiency um, uh, open baffle speakers uh, in the picture. We and actually Charles managed to catch the Uri monoblocks. Uh, well, one of them anyways, the right-hand channel on the floor. And I'm going to set the volume for a quarter with the bypass on. So that's the maximum volume at a quarter we can get. And let me repeat this. The system is safe. There's no chance that somebody's going to come along and hit play on a music player. Uh, or that, as Charles mentioned, that if you've got your phone plugged in, it's going to do something really difficult. And what we want, right now what I want to do is I want to hear the noise floor just as the preamp. So I'm going to turn off the input. So I'm going to put it in the detente position. And I, we would come in like this and pardon my fat head. And I'm going to, I'll bring my ear right into the tweeter and into the mid range. And if I was actually hearing some uh, really low bass frequencies, uh, that were a problem, I would get down on my knees. Don't make me do that. <laughs> um, normally you can hear um, hum and uh, low frequency noise down to about 30 hertz quite easily with your ears even up here. Um, but the real, uh, the real, um, real audible noise is the real in the tweeter and in the mid. Driver. In the mid range, yeah. But all three drivers in our case, it's a three-way system. If you have a one-way or two-way system or a four-way, then you, you're, you know, your frequency band is divided. So oh. you're, you actually have to pay attention to each, each individual speaker. But I'm, up, I'm right, right up close. Okay, so now I'm going to bring the volume up to half. I apologize if you can hear some traffic and noise outside. There's construction and we're on a fairly busy street. Yeah, we usually film at 3 in the morning, so it's quiet. <laughs> Just kidding. And I don't hear a thing. And actually, the volume didn't go up at all. Um, now, I'm interested to see what the idle noise floor is at maximum volume. So I've opened the, the volume right to the, right to the full uh, clockwise position. And I still can't hear anything. There's a really very faint 120 hertz hum, maybe. But with my ear in the tweeter, I can just I can tell it's there, but it could even, it's so quiet that it might even be the transformer on the monoblock, and I'm hearing it higher up. But anyways, um, I'm going to turn the volume down, and I would do the same thing now with, um, with the phono preamp in circuit. The noise floor will go up, of course, or if you had your DAC connected, or a digital music player, it doesn't matter, you're streaming. Uh, feed. Um, it doesn't matter what you've got uh, connected up. Whatever your normal system is, is what you would be listening for the noise floor. And it's amazing how much um, you can learn from very carefully listening um, from, especially if you start off knowing what a, a really low noise uh, preamp like this sounds like. Um, and then bringing other components into that system and seeing how it adds to the noise floor as it goes along. Yeah. Okay, well that gave you a bit of an overview of how we bring a, a new piece of gear into the system safely. Now, if you've, you didn't have a, a really quiet noise floor, it's always possible you've got something in the area that's noisy. Now, we actually have a Navy base. It's still, <laughs> it's about seven kilometers, which would be what, four miles, something like that, hmm. uh, roughly. And it's got a, a pulse um, coming off of its radio tower that we we that we pick up in a lot of our sweeps. Yeah. <laughs> so, but we it, don't actually really hear it through the system, thankfully. Now, the likelihood is, is if you've got a lot of noise on the preamp that sounds electronic, there's a good chance it's actually something, a device nearby. So you're, in our case, our modem actually used to sit really close to where the speaker was that we were just listening to. And we could hear it. And we moved it across. The, yeah, you yeah. could hear it. 
so uh, wireless devices, phones, Bluetooth devices, anything that's transmitting uh, fairly strong signals that are nearby can get picked up by vacuum tubes and it's the same for anything out there. Yeah, and the noise can be on your house mains wiring. It, it could be, it could actually, if you're, you live in an apartment or a duplex or something like that, it could be the next door neighbor. Um, and it could just be a modern light bulb that uh, wasn't that well, a cheap modern light bulb. I mean, the better ones are designed to be low noise, but there's a lot of old um, uh, modern um, fluorescent lamps that uh, and a lot of smart devices now yeah. like smart bulbs and things like that so oh, yeah. just be aware of that if you have a bit of noise and it sounds like sort of a buzzy repeating electronic pulse try moving things around shutting things off um, and see if it helps improve things yeah but I I think what we should do now Charles is we should we should stop stop yapping <laughs> and let these fine folks who've put all this work into building the the new rocket preamp listen to some tunes yeah well done everyone this is jim and charles signing off cheers everyone <laughs>